Hi and welcome to Smash Ultimate Basics, where we teach you how to take a children's game seriously. Today, I'm going to talk about teching. This mechanic is necessary to understand and not only improve your advantage and disadvantage state, but also to understand your combo roots better. For those of you who saw my last guide about edge guarding and ledge trapping, you know the basics of this mechanic, but it gets a whole lot more in depth and intricate than just being able to cancel your knockback. It can also allow you to jump, roll in either direction, provide more intangibility, and keep your opponent guessing. Without further ado, let's get right into it. As I mentioned in my previous guide, you can tech stage spikes to cancel your knockback, unless your percent is too high. I didn't cover this too in depth though, so I'll briefly mention some important facts here. If you quickly press shield within 11 frames of hitting the stage, you'll successfully buffer a stage tech. Buffering is where you input an action before it's available to be performed, such as if you're in hit stun, and it'll happen on the next frame it can. Ultimate allows you to buffer a tech specifically for 11 frames, which is where that figure comes from. Too early and you may air dodge through instead, and too late means the tech won't work. I tried to both match the input and hold it, and neither of them worked. This is because after that 11 frame window is up, there is a 40 frame cooldown time where you can't tech. Finally, if you try to tech a strong enough move at too high a percent, then you get stage spiked anyway. Situations like this are untechable, and you can tell whether or not it's untechable by the red impact effect that accompanies it. You can also tech jump by holding or flicking the control stick up, or pressing jump as you tech. To my knowledge, all characters can tech jump when hit, though some characters can wall jump without being hit, allowing for some really cool mix-ups to get back to the stage. There's a small subset within those wall jumpers that can also cling to the wall, though other than our resident occasional PT player, I haven't seen any of you play a character that can wall cling. There's a few offstage moves, such as Ganondorf's up B, that feel very easy to tech. Other moves, like Lucina's Dolphin Slash, are a lot more difficult. For you guys on the team, I think the best way to practice would be to play more or less like normal until like 40-70%, to 70%, then try to simulate an offstage edgeguard scenario. For anyone not in the team however, I think the best way would be to first get the timing down on various attacks and training, then go into real games and try to force yourself into those scenarios. Consciously think about when you want to tech, and after a while it will probably become second nature. Full disclosure, I'm pretty bad at teching stage spikes right now. It's not something I'm currently working on, though I should. It would turn my 14 odd frames too late into a perfect reaction. So far all of this has been for stage spikes, but what about on the ground? Well my friend, don't worry, cause that's what we're covering next. Teching isn't just limited to saving your stock off stage. If you get hit hard enough, you'll enter a state called tumble. This state in and of itself doesn't do all that much, just prevents you from fast falling unless you use an aerial. That said, it also allows you to tech when you get close enough to the ground, though if you're not close enough, you'll air dodge. When teching, you have three main options, tech in place, tech roll back, and tech roll forward. All tech options give you 20 frames of intangibility, with tech in place having five frames of vulnerability, and tech roll in both directions having 20. This means that if your opponent has a read on you, there's enough frames to punish with something. It's not completely safe. That said, it's not something most characters can react to easily unless the character in particular is broken beyond measure. Looking at you, Sonic. So as long as you're being unpredictable, you'll probably be fine. Teching isn't the only way to safely get out of tumble. Specials, aerials, your double jump, and air dodges can all be used to cancel out of it. You can also use an aerial right near the ground if you want to act immediately afterwards. I tested both this and fast falling with an aerial, and both of them seem to have the same amount of end lag when hitting the ground, which for Link, that's 5 frames. I'll leave a link in the description to ultimate frame data if you want to see the landing lag for your specific character. Look for the table labeled landing veiled under mountains of beautiful frame data that's hard to sift through. But to any of my fellow Link mains fortunate enough to find my channel, you're welcome. All of these have their own use depending on the situation. Air dodges are mainly used to avoid committal attacks, as the amount of end lag you sustain from it is massive. Aerials and specials, while character specific, can punish aggressive enemies or cancel your momentum when combined with a fastball. Double jumps also cancel your momentum and can be used to avoid aggressive players. 
Using an aerial right as you land is a great mix up over tech in place. And finally, the tech options are used when close to the ground to either provide extra intangibility or to cover ground. There are niche use cases for all those options I didn't cover here, some of which are character specific, but that's the general premise behind each of those. If you don't do any option, however, this is what happens. There's a reason you want to get out of tumble, and it's not just because fast flying is a great tool to have in disadvantage. If you don't do anything and hit the ground, you'll bounce off at once before laying in a prone state. This is called a mistech, as it's what happens when you either tech too late, or don't do an auto tumble option at all. In total, this animation takes a minimum of 25 frames before you can act with any option. That's almost half a second! This gives your opponent more than enough time to casually stroll up before taking your stock and perhaps ruin your day. It's not over if you mistech though. If your opponent is too slow or doesn't punish your mistech, you have several ways to get up as safely as possible. From a mistech state, you have normal get up, get up attack, and rolls in either direction. A lot of newer players are predictable with their get up options and can be hard punished for it. Y'all know I love my Ganondorf roll reads, so don't let that be you. Fun fact, you can actually tech Gan inside B, turning my 50-50 read to more of a 2080, oh god, I done messed up. Rolls should mainly be used to either disengage from the opponent or get more control of the stage. Though if you start being predictable, don't say I didn't warn you. Get up attack is a sudden get off me tool to catch your approaching opponent off guard, though it's pretty minus on shield and easy to punish. Normal get up is probably the safest get up option, having less end lag than roll and no minus on shield numbers to worry about. That said, I've legit hardly ever seen anyone use that option, myself included, so I'm not sure when or even if it's good to use. But I mean, like, it's there. One more thing. While you're in the bounce animation, your opponent can use a weak attack to essentially keep you in place and prevent your getup option. This is called a jab lock, and it allows your opponent to get really big punishes and may even let them take your stock. This is part of the reason why, generally speaking, missed techs are not preferable over any of the other options. Well, what do you do against mistechs or set other options? You've got to understand teching if you want to expand your combo game and get more out of your advantage state. As far as stage teching goes, I really don't know any reliable ways to punish that. And even if there are, it's probably not character specific or not universal. I couldn't find any strategies in the research for this video. But I will say you might be able to preemptively throw out an aerial if you were to tech jump, however hard that might be. For ground game though, now that's something I can help with. There's actually a term to describe trying to cover your opponent's tumble options, and it's called tech chase. It generally applies to when they tech the ground, but we'll also briefly mention counters to other options as well. You also might have something that covers every tech option, such as a well-timed charge shot, so keep that in mind. Tech in place has the opponent vulnerable for 6 frames until they can shield. The frame window to punish the tech itself, I'll admit is tight, but far from impossible. Try punishing with either multi hits, something with a long active hitbox, or relatively slow smash attack, something like 15 to 18 frame startup. If you can't punish the initial option, then you might be able to read what they do after. I, for example, like to shield after tech in place in which case you can punish with a grab. It all depends on what they like to do. For rolls, first figure out where they roll and when. For roll back, keep moving forward as the opponent rolls and punish with whatever you find to be appropriate. For link, I personally go for grabs until kill percent, where I might try for a GSA kill. For roll in, either space yourself to still be in front of the opponent, or run in and turn around with an attack. This can also apply to mistech rolls, but there's a better way to punish those. Really quickly, for air dodges, wait to see where they air dodge and punish with whatever you want. Specials and aerials are character specific, and for fast falls and landed aerials, punish what they do after. There are exceptions to all of these, but such is life when you're playing a game with 81 unique characters, almost all of which have their own super weird jank to account for. What? The most optimal punish for a mistech is most likely your jab lock. As the name implies, a jab lock is where you use a jab to reset your opponent's bounce animation. You can reset your opponent only twice before they automatically stand up. Why? Well, realistically, they needed a way to prevent a game-breaking infinite, but I think it's funnier to say they just wanted to break their own physics just for the hell of it. 
Anyway, you have a maximum of two resets. These resets do not have to be performed with just a jab, though. On Link, Weak Nair, Bomb Drop, or Throw, and his arrows all work as well. Afterwards, you most times want to punish with something that's either strong or does a lot of damage. For Link, Down Smash covers all characters when lying down like that, and on some of them, an F Smash will work as well. Tech chasing also requires you to understand when and where your opponent goes into tumble. Most people don't try to attack if they're sent up high, for example, and instead try for an air dodge or a fastball aerial. Figure out what combos lead into tech chase scenarios, and practice what you would do for various different situations. I'm assuming you all don't have a moddable switch though, in which case just pretend or get your sibling to help with it or something. I'm planning to make a general combo guide next, so I'll cover this a little more then, but just know that tech chases only work if you know when and where to try them. Teching is an incredibly integral mechanic with a wide array of applications and uses. Offstage, it can be used as both a way to cancel knockback and as an additional jump. On stage, it provides a much better alternative as opposed to forcibly laying on the ground for a half a second. Tech in place is the safest option to use, while rolls gain or make space between you and your opponent. We also went over the other options to get out of tumble, as well as other options you have when you miss your tech. And finally, we covered how to take advantage of your opponent's habits and punish their missed techs. That's going to be it for today's video. This one took me a ton of time to make, almost the entirety of Easter break for the video editing alone. And so if you're not on the team, a like and sub would be greatly appreciated. Our team made it to playoffs, and so I'm probably going to take a bit of a break from making content to practice. In case you haven't noticed from the B-roll, I'm kind of bad at this game, so I really need to work on it. But I will be back after the season's over, or at the very least when the school year is. Thank you for understanding, and uh, yeah, that's about it. See ya.